So welcome, everybody. And the purpose of tonight's webinar is to go through the pre seen material, to talk about the things that you should be familiar with, and to answer any questions that you may have. I have got a few questions that people have asked in advance, uh, but hopefully this will be a great opportunity for you to understand what are the key messages that the pre seen material is saying. And I'll also share with you, I, I've been working with the ACCA, I'm working with ACCA, ACCA students. The uh, purpose of this evening is to give you some of my experiences and to share with you what you should definitely make sure you are aware of and comfortable with. Yep. And just like to say a big thanks for PQ Magazine. Um, PQ Magazine, I've, I've known the editor of PQ Magazine for many, many years, Graham Hamley. Uh, he is a real student champion. And I would recommend, it doesn't cost you any money, for you to subscribe to PQ Magazine. And if SPL is your final exam, you can subscribe to NQ Magazine, which gives lots of tips for a newly qualified accountant. So really, really useful free resource, which you can access. OK, um, if you have any questions during the webinar, just pop your question into the chat box and I will deal with it at an appropriate moment. So the first thing I want to talk about is is the pre scene and just tell you what I see in the pre scene. I don't know whether you know anything about me, but I, I've been involved with the ACCA education team ooh, for over 20 years. And I've done all the training of tutors. So wherever you are in the world, I will have trained the tutors who are running your local colleges. Uh, if you go on to the ACCA website, you will see lots or certainly the YouTube channel, lots of the videos there about how to take apart a question, how uh, to break down the marks, how to do timing. I've I've done all of those on behalf of the ACCA. So hopefully you are confident that what I'm going to say to you this evening gives you um, you, you know, some help in passing the exam. And, and that's what I'm here to do to make sure that you do the best you possibly can in the exam. And I've just got up on the screen, what is the pre-scene all about? And unfortunately, there are some people on various social media talking about what questions are going to come up in the exam. Well, you know, put their name into the ACCA website. If it comes up, they might have some credibility. If you put my name into the ACCA website, you'll see lots and lots and lots of articles, of references. Put my name into the ACCA YouTube channel. You'll see many, many videos, webinars. And yeah, just, I would just say, be careful. Anyone can put things on Facebook. I did read something on Facebook recently that the moon is made of cheese. Are you worried? I'm not. So that's my point. Be careful of all of these people who have no relevance to the ACCA on Facebook. And when I say they have no relevance, the ACCA have not given them a platinum approved course. I run a course with FME, which is platinum approved, which is the highest it can be. Uh, I've also worked with the examining team and the education team for over 20 years. So hopefully that gives you a bit of confidence. But my point would be that the pre-scene is designed to provide a background and a context only. It's not a question spotting exercise. And I'm going to talk to you about the things that the pre-scene says to me, and hopefully it will say similar to you. So I'm assuming you've read the pre-scene. It's about NC Tech. It brings in a lot of students says, oh, I hate IT. Well, OK, if you don't like IT, that's fine. But I don't think it's a really good mental attitude to think, I hate IT. So just appreciate what software as a service is, what the basic IASS is as a service, um, the infrastructure as a service. And yeah, as long as you're familiar with those, 
I'm I'm okay. I'm okay. And hopefully you will be okay. Yeah. So the first thing is just to be familiar with the terminology, be familiar if you're not familiar already with what the benefits of cloud services are and the pre seen material gives you all those benefits. I would personally ask you to think about how cloud services help you in your real life. I mean, in lockdown, if you are working as an accountant, what did you do? Just work on your own at home? Or did you log on to the cloud? And how was that cloud secured? And when you updated things, did everyone get updated on their spreadsheets and other things? Of course they did. Yeah. So lots of security, lots of group sharing. And also the cloud server can often purchase things in bulk and share those purchases over many clients and therefore have a lot of cost savings, which can be passed on to the client. So just be familiar with the benefit of cloud services. I'd say that's pretty important. Also, be familiar with the challenges, particularly in Farland. So what's happening in Farland? Well, cloud service sector is growing really quickly. It's going to double in size over the next five years. So you should appreciate about that. Global people are going to come into the market. So lots of well-established IT companies are going to come into the Farland market. There was an issue about high-speed internet. It's not an issue at the moment, but there's a worry that it could be an issue. Uh, obviously, cloud services are very reliant on that. There was also a bit of an issue with data hacking. Yep. Uh, so you need to appreciate what you do in real life. It's really important on SBL to always check back to real life. So what happens in your company to stop cyber attacks? Uh, what are, They also mentioned about regulatory issues they're they're evolving and challenging to comply with so you know how could we do that and there was also staffing issues in farland in that there was people leaving and it was hard to recruit new people to come back and work so be appreciative of those issues on nc tech the other thing to be appreciative and just make sure that you understand would be, do you understand what business intelligence and IT is? Do you understand how it works? Essentially, if you go on to anything online, there will be cookies who will be recording what you click on, and that creates business intelligence. The power of computing has exponentially increased, which allows it to process really complex things, it's kind of how we've got Bitcoin because of these supercomputers, quantum computing, artificial intelligence through, I suppose, what I'm going to refer to next, which is machine learning and uh, uh, other things, we're able to really behave as a human. Um, so be completely conversant with artificial intelligence and how it helps and machine learning, because they were mentioned in the pre-scene. And the whole point of the pre-scene, remember, is to just um, give you a heads up on some terminologies. If you're not fully conversant with them, don't be afraid. Just give, look them up. The other thing in the pre-scene I would make sure I'm fully conversant with are the KPIs. And they gave some operational KPIs and they gave some financial KPIs. Just make sure that you could think about the typical measures that you might use in addition to what's given there. And yeah. Just so so you don't kind of panic on the exam day. I'll talk more of that later. So that would be quite important. And then thinking about governance, what do we need to think about governance? Well, in the scenario, it does give some information. Um, it was founded by entrepreneurs. Then venture capitalists got involved. And then it was floated about five years ago. Founders still own 10% of the shares each, but Nobody owns or owns more than 10%. And they give a diagram. I wasn't 100% sure whether that was the non-executives and the chief executives on one level and the finance and commercial director on another level. But whichever way it was, the board is balanced. There isn't an excess of non-execs and execs. So appreciate that. They've also got good governance in that they've got an audit committee with non-execs and nominations, a remuneration and a risk. I mean, there are other committees that could be there. I'll talk about that in a moment. But 
it doesn't seem too bad. It seems pretty okay. So that seems pretty fine to me. There's there are comments we can make, and I'll take some questions in a moment, and we'll 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 think about that. You should also be very familiar with what the mission statement is, because there might be a opportunity given in the real exam, and that opportunity would need to comply with the mission statement. So make sure you understand what the mission is about, how they want to achieve operational excellence, exceed expectations, have a profitable business model, sustainable relationships with stakeholders, and having a good, strong NCT tech brand. In addition to the mission, I'd recommend that you're also fully conversant with the values um, because there will be opportunities that are likely to challenge and contrast with the values that NC Tech has. So when you're evaluating maybe a business opportunity, you would be able to say, well, the only problem with this is it is completely counter to our current values. Yep. So that's important. What else would I suggest? Um, well, what would we be preparing for in terms of questions on the basis of what I've said? Well, before we talk about that, do you have any questions that I can answer on what I've said so far? Just pop a, a message in the chat box. If you don't have anything to say, that's absolutely fine. But, you know, you're here live. The advantage of being here live is you can ask me any questions which you want. But for now, just on what I've said with regards to the information on the pre-scene that's kind of shouting at me, the governance bits and the values and the missions and the KPIs, do you have any questions on any of those issues? Okay, okay, okay. Well, I'm going to keep going and I'm going to move on. So if we were preparing for potential questions, what would I suggest would be good preparation resources? Well, I think the first thing I'd say is really good is to have a look at the ACCA article on the applications of new technology. If you go onto the website, there's articles written by the examining team. There is an article that is very, very similar to what is said in the pre-seen material. I actually find it easier to read and easier to understand. So I think if you read that article and then go back and read the pre-seen material, you might find the pre-seen material a little easier to digest. So definitely have a look at that. You are potentially likely to be facing a situation where the company has, uh, NC Tech has a choice. So when it has a choice, what do we need to do on a choice? Well, if you go onto the ACCA website, have a look at my articles on the strategic planning process part one and the strategic planning process part two. And that gives you frameworks that you can just use in a choice situation. And in a choice situation, I would recommend you think about, is it suitable? Is it feasible? Is it acceptable? In the scenario, it does give you information on the strengths and weaknesses of NC Tech. So you need to be really conversant with those strengths and weaknesses because an opportunity on the table that doesn't complement the strengths is not a good opportunity. Yeah, an opportunity on the table that exposes the weakness is not a good opportunity. So watch out for that. Also it gives information on risks. So have a look at those risks. On each of those risks, what would be the key performance indicators you might use to measure those risks? So just have a, had a thought about what you might use there. So really, really important to think about that. What else would I be looking at? Well, if you go to the specimen one and the specimen two, which the ACCA have invested a lot of time and effort in preparing and giving answers to, I think it's really important that we are familiar with what is suggested there. And we were able to maybe think about the specimen papers in the context of NC Tech. And are you familiar with talent management? Are you familiar with what it does? Yeah. Are you familiar with digital marketing? So when we think about digital marketing, we think about the six eyes. Are you familiar with big data analytics and not just three Vs or four Vs? 
appreciate what big data analytics can do, the competitive advantage it can bring, and also the drawbacks of it. Um, it mentions in the pre-scene about a strategy committee. What's a strategy committee? What would it do? It also mentions about change management in the pre-scene material. So appreciate that. And it also mentioned about EMAS. So I, I run a, a, a an interactive course online where I set mock exams and homeworks on the ACCA CBE platform. So if you've not practiced answering questions on the ACCA CBE platform, please have a go. Yeah, it's not. It's not intuitive. It's not, it, it, it's a bit clunky, um, but if you've familiarised yourself with it, you'll be absolutely fine. So in my mocks, I did create a question on talent management related to the pre-scene material. I created a question on the strategy committee. I created a question on change management. And in a previous mock, I created a question linked to EMAS. Now, is are they exam tips? Not really, but I, I would suggest that Anything in the pre in the specimen papers, you should be fully familiar with, yeah. So make sure you are, and make sure you know you, you understand those issues. That's that's like really really important that that you understand that. So be comfortable with that. Sorry, I was just checking. I was recording. I am recording. So um, I was just a bit worried for a moment then. Um, what else would I suggest I prepare for? Well, IT in a typical situation, you know, what if it was outsourced? What are the pros and cons of outsourcing? I also, in, in my mock that I got ACCA SBL markers to mark, I did do a question on outsourcing. So think about why you would outsource the pros and cons of outsource. Be a Complete. There is an, an article on IT security as well. So think of it in the workplace. Most of us work. What do we do in the workplace? I mean, let me ask you. Let put it in the chat box. How? What? What happens in your workplace? And and it's really important. A lot of people, you know, there's a question in your real exam on IT security, and think, is that five forces or is it Porter's diamond, or is it the cultural web? No, no. It's asking you what would you do to secure. In the workplace, SPL is a practical exam. So in your workplace, if you could let me know what typical IT um, solutions are used where you work to stop data attacks and cyber attacks. That's how you've got to think in the SPL exam. If you just pop something in the chat box to me, what, what stops people and hackers getting into your systems? fundamental basic question which if you can answer you can do well on spl but if you're trying to think is that chapter 14 or is it chapter 17 no no it's not any of them it's like what would you do in real life so give me an answer if what what happens in your business to beef up your it security secure authentication thank you aisha App authenticator, so you have an app which you have to sign up for. Two-step authentication, yep. That app might be linked to facial recognition on your phone or fingerprint recognition on your phone or code recognition. Fantastic. Thank you, Susanna. Anything else that stops hackers getting you? Update the policy. F yes, phishing email. So Susanna and Aisha, I'm not hearing from anyone else, but well done. That is exactly how you have to behave in the SBL exam. If you're relying on remember which chapter you learned, you're not going to do very well on SBL. SBL is a practical exam where you have to behave as you would behave in the workplace. So, um, Yep, the, a great one there from Susanna, phishing emails. So often there will be sent emails to you which are dummy phishing emails to see whether you as an employee respond to them. If you do, you'll be in trouble, but it would be an ind indication to the company that maybe the training that's taking place hasn't been very effective and you will be given further training. Yep, so it'll be asking you to click on a link. And if you click on that link, that that is actually, you know, it's not a, a, a bad link. It's your internal IT people 
phishing you to see whether you do click on the link or you don't. And if you do, you're obviously not taking any notice of, of the training. So be familiar with all those things is, is what I'm saying there. So well done. Thank you for that. Also, it did mention about business intelligence, quantum computing, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So make sure you are very aware of those things. OK. What else would I be looking to prepare for? Well, as I've just said to you, I wouldn't be trying to spot. Oh, it's going to be a question on this. I'd just be trying to think how I would think in my real workplace. What would I do in the workplace? And the answers you've given me there about fishing and training and all that. Fantastic. Because remember, it's a practical exam, not a technical exam. And if you expect to get marks for regurgitating technical theory, dream on. You won't be. OK, so that's important. So on what I have said so far, do you have any questions on what I've said? Anything you want? Well, I've had a few pre-seen questions. Um, uh, this was actually from someone that got below 50 percent in their mock and they wanted to know how could they get over 50%. Well, I think the first key thing just to acknowledge is you only need to get over 50%. Yeah. So with my students and hopefully the people who have been training you have done similar, I've done about eight homeworks that I make students do on the CBE platform. I've done three full three and a quarter hour mocks on the CBE platform. I've got ACCA SBL markers to mark them. And I give lots of feedback. I don't just give marks. I'll say, you know, white space is good. White space is bad. You need to give more points, et cetera, et cetera. And after each mock, as long as you take on board the feedback, you get better next time. And then there's a few more feedbacks. You get better next time. So, you know, people who are doing three mocks with all that feedback, it, it, I think it's quite difficult to fail, if I'm really honest. So if you've been doing mocks, Take on board the feedback that people have given to you and act on that feedback. How can points be developed to get full marks? Well, the first thing I would say is if you just regurgitate what's in the case scenario, you won't get any marks. If you make a reasonable connection with regards to the information given, you'll get a mark. To get more than one mark and maybe move it from one mark to two marks you need to be thinking about the so what. So why did you make that point? Yeah. What's the consequence of what you've just said? Why have you said that? That will enable you to maybe move your point from one to two. I might even make that in a separate little mini paragraph. Should I leave my plans on the word processor? Most definitely. Most definitely. There is a scratch pad. The problem with the scratch pad is it doesn't get handed in. Whereas if you put it in the word processor, that will get handed in. The, the issue is you've got to make it very clear to the marker that this is a plan. And then when you write your answer, write an answer. But students who get over 45 in the real exam, their scripts will get reviewed again and again by the examining team to see whether can I somehow make this student pass? If you have a plan there as evidence, that might help in that assessment. However, I'm not saying write a plan because the examiner will mark it. But to be honest, if you do a plan, you won't be borderline. If you do a plan, you will be getting a good mark because you'll be getting a good answer with a plan. How do you finish on time? Well, to finish on time, you need to have a time budget. You need to strictly stick to your time budget. I think I've put on my YouTube channel a video on how to stick to time. I mean, what I'd say is to summarize that video, the first 50% of the marks are the easiest to get. So you need to make sure you have time available to answer all the questions. The first 50 is easy. The second 50 is more difficult. The marks per minute acquisition for the first 50 is much quicker than the second 50. So if you have a budget to enable you to answer all the requirements and you get at least 50% of all the requirements, you'll pass the exam. 
if you're on a question, oh, I can really say a lot on this. Nobody ever gets 100%. And actually, the marks per minute scored 50 to 100 are much lower than 0 to 50. So put yourself in the situation where you get all the 0 to 50 marks. Okay? Really important to take that on board. And then another question was, is there an issue with the founders being on the board? No. I don't think there is. I'll talk about governance in a moment. But the governance was the fact that there was committees. No one had more than 10%. The committees had NEDs. So, yeah, there was, I think there was one of the committees, if I remember. That might have been potentially, let me just go back to it. I, I, I think the risk committee had a commercial director and operations director. So these people were the 10 percenters, weren't they? So mm, there's potential issues there. You might actually comment on, but yeah, be familiar with that. Okay, so that would be some pre-webinar questions I've had. What I'd also like to recommend you to do is have a look at the examiner's report. Okay, and let's look at the lessons that we can learn from the examiner's report. I have actually put something on my YouTube channel about how we review the pre c material. So, and I've talked about the examiner's report. So this is an official ACCA document uh, that the ACCA have asked me to produce. So have a look at that. But to summarize it, what was said? Well, what was said, first of all, was that students with the updated exam actually did all three tasks, which suggests their timing was better than it normally is. However, there were some people that still had poor time management. And what caused them to have poor time management? Well, they they kind of gave a lot of definitions of theory, no marks. They probably wrote too long plans. Plans are for you. They just need to be enabling you to get a good answer. And you've got to also remember that because the markers are marking lots of tasks, they're very aware of what's in the um, exhibits, pre-seen information. And if you're just regurgitating stuff or you're repeating points, it will be very obvious to them because that's all they're doing for two weeks. So don't do that. Yeah, it's a waste of time. Why did people fail? They didn't do what I've just said about developing the so what and the why. They didn't develop their points. Yep. So think about so what, consequence, why. They were a bit generic in their answers. You need to make sure your answer is in the context of the scenario. This can often be assisted by professional skills marks. So make sure that you tune into the professional skills marks. Make sure you also tune in to your workplace. Try and picture it. Yeah. What would you do in real life? Just like I talked to you on IT security a minute ago. Um, basically, they didn't use all the information. Yeah. So I think it's really important when reading the exam. What's the story here? What's it saying? Now, I know you might not be in love with IT, but you've got to try to think in the context of IT here. So, yeah, please do so. This is a quite a common thing in exams. Students not answering the question that's asked. Now, the reason for this is obviously exams are a bit stressful. And when you're stressed, our body produces something called cortisol. And what cortisol is, is a chemical that enables us to, you know, run away or fight the situation. So there's a woolly mammoth coming towards us. We're able to fight that woolly mammoth or we're able to run away from it. However, we're sat at a computer in an exam, but it still floods our body with cortisol. And that cortisol can cause our brain to do strange things. So therefore, we need a strategy to deal with a cortisol attack. So what I do with all my students is I ask them to read the requirements once. I ask them to read the requirements again. I then ask them to think, where's this question in the context of what we've studied? Let's brainstorm if we can. How many marks do I need to get? Okay. So I do a brainstorm and then I do a mark focus plan. And then just before I dive in, I read it one more time. And often when I read it one more time, I see, ah, it says disadvantages as well as advantages, or my plan was going down the wrong way. I need to come back. That is a way of stopping you reading the wrong question. Your brain 
is going to be filled with stress chemicals and that's going to happen. We need to have a mechanism to stop that happening. And that's the way to do it. Okay. Technical knowledge. At this stage, your technical knowledge, it doesn't have to be as an applied exam. You don't need to know the minutiae, but you do need to have a broad level of technical knowledge in all the areas. And hopefully you've had an appropriate timetable of study and you've got summations of those key areas. Commercial acumen. Well, all that comes through as a professional skills mark, but also you just need to show it. That would be a professional thing to show. So, you know, think about um, the situation in real life. Does it make sense to you as an accountant? Yeah. What's the, you know, the costs and the benefits? Picture it. Don't include loads of irrelevant content. It just bores the markers. Yep. People who copy and paste, it's very obvious, and it's a real turnoff, a real turnoff. So be careful. And then the other thing that cortisol and brain hijacking does is it sometimes just makes us see half the question. So I call it the rule of and because often in a question, it will talk about, can you do this? And can you talk about this? Or, you know, what are the risks? And what are the benefits? And you just need to, again, reading it once, reading it twice, brainstorm, mark focus. That's the way to do it. Just going back to, I'm just going to cut back to this point here. On the mark focus, I, I see a lot of students who, it's a 12 mark question. They give five mark, five points and they say, it's two marks a point. My tutor told me two marks a point. I just think that's a very risky strategy. I would say if it's a 12 mark question, I would be trying to get at least seven or eight points. I'd be trying to get each of those points turned into a so what, a why, a consequence. So maybe they're worth two points. The reality is not every one of a student's developed points is worth two marks. But if you kind of arrogantly think that every one of your points is worth two marks, you're wrong. Yeah. And you've just got to trust me on that, having worked on this for more than you know 20 years, as I've said. OK, so picture it is important. Irrelevant content not to do. And, and the rule of and helps you with providing everything specified. So that is what I'm seeing in the pre-scene. So I think I've got a question just come through there. Uh, as discussed, we need to think from the perspective of the real world. Is there a writing technique? Um, length of answer. Don't make the answer too long, Aisha. Think about what you do in the workplace. And I would say no points are ever worth more than two. So don't try to write anything more than that. But, you know, always try to anchor what you're saying in the context of the real workplace. A lot of people, because honestly, if you've done tax, SBR, AAA, it's all about learning theory. The, the sad thing is real life, all that theory you've learned, artificial intelligence, machine learning will do all those jobs. So the future of your success as an accountant coming up with AFM, SBR, AAA, advanced tax, it's not going to be there. And, and I can say that because I do a lot of CPD with all of the professional bodies, right? The CPD on what's called finance business partnering, which is basically the accountant of the future is an accountant, which is better at communicating, having empathy, um, not someone that can recurgitate loads of skills because a machine can do that. So SBL is really preparing you for the machine age. And the best way, I think, in which I can advise you to answer a question is think about what you do at work. But I'd also encourage you to think about maybe inspiring some of your uh, arguments with some academic theory, which you use in a plan, and then you use to as a catalyst to develop your answers. That's what I want you to do. Okay. So hopefully that answered your question, Aisha. Um, do we have any, so if I give you, so that's quite a lot on the pre-scene. That's quite a lot what I see on the pre-scene um, or what I think you need to definitely prepare for. Hopefully that's useful. But if I can give you maybe a five minute warning, if you have any further questions, please ask me in the chat box and I'll answer away. 
but also I, I, you know, I don't want to waste your evening. Uh, I want to provide you with a framework which you can use for your evening to be effective. What have we got here? We've got a question. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll share a, a recording link to this on my YouTube channel. I'm not sure whether you follow me on YouTube, but I've made your life easy on YouTube, sharing all the stuff I publish with the ACCA and also recent things I've worked with in the ACCA and just ha how to make your life easy, really. So it will be on my YouTube channel, ACCA Sean Purcell SPL. Um, so you'll be able to find it there. So I will put it'll take a little while to render and record, but the information should be there. Yeah. But if you have any more information, any more questions, in addition to what I've said, happy to answer them. I've, I've kind of, if you're just joining, I have answered pre uh, questions people sent me pre this webinar to just, just make sure I answer them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If you're, if you're happy, if you're happy, uh, what I would say as a final point to you is for many people, SPL might be your last exam. Your life is going to change massively as a result of passing SPL. And I think it's really important for you to focus on that prize. Yep. You're never going to have to do exams again. You're going to double or triple your salary just because you passed an exam. That's, you know, amazing. So do the best you can over the next week. Make sure you take on board what I've said. Then it's all over. Yeah, it's all over. Uh, might do another little final tips thing at the weekend if that will help you. But yeah, really important, really important to take on board what I've said tonight. Uh, I, I, there's no, you know, the whole point of me talking about this is to make sure you pass this exam, you get qualified as soon as possible. And yeah, life changes. So I'd like to wish you all the best of luck. Be careful on listening to false prophets on Facebook. All I'd say is put their name into the ACCA YouTube channel, put their name into the ACCA website. If their name doesn't come up, the ACCA don't rate them. Put my name in and you'll see lots of things come up. Hopefully that gives you some confidence. Um, the other thing I think you need to just take a little bit of care of in the future. So my students who are getting 70 and 80 in their mocks, uh, I still worry for one or two of them about their mental health on the day of the exam in that they panic, they get their brain flooded with cortisol. So if you just feel that you're slightly a panicky person, make sure that you have techniques and I will share some techniques maybe on LinkedIn over the next couple of days to deal with stress. I mean, basically breathing, step out, come back in refreshed. Yeah, just a two little minute break would be what I recommend. OK, so thank you for turning up. Thank you for listening. I wish you all the very best. Maybe review what I've said again. Think about what I've said. Have a look at some of the other things I've given on the YouTube channel. All free advice, all based on, you know, 20, 25 years of working with students and the examining team at the ACCA. And hopefully you get some benefit from it. Thank you very much, and I wish you all the best of luck.